Hello everyone, this is Pastor Stewart of Destiny Preparation Church, welcoming you once again to Road to Destiny. Glad to have you with us once again this week. I pray that your week has been blessed. We made it all the way through the first month of the year, first month of the decade. January is over, we're now into February, and I trust that God has been keeping you and blessing you uh, thus far throughout this month. We are still in perilous times. As the pandemic uh, continues around us, so many things are still a little bit unsteady, unstable, but there's hope in the air, both in the natural and of course there's hope in the spiritual. We believe that God is still in control in the midst of and through it all. So we're here with you. Glad to have you with us. I pray that God is with you as well and you know that he is with you. I'm here at the church and uh, as a result of some changes that were made by the state, our services continue to be open. I actually thought a while back that uh, they might go the other direction and we might have to fully close, but uh, a lot of things have been lifted here in New York State and now uh, our services are available on Sunday. We're still doing live stream on Wednesday and throughout the week, but our Sunday morning service is available. I've seen people asking what service, what churches are having services that are open to the public. Our Sunday morning service starts at 11.30 a.m. You are invited to come, 1405 Lau Avenue. Join us here this Sunday, and any Sunday, as long as the Lord wills, the Lord opens the opportunity, we'll continue to have services here available for you. And if you can't come, if you're too far away, um, we are also live streaming now on Sunday mornings at 11.30 a.m. So join us in worship on Sundays throughout the week. The other programs that we have going on are here to help encourage, inspire you. Wednesday nights, we have our midweek Bible study. Saturday morning prayer takes place by phone. You can call in for our Saturday morning prayer uh, any Saturday morning and join in with those that are connected together. Also, we started last, last month with a Friday night prayer service. We had it throughout the month and throughout our consecration. Now we've decided to continue it on the fourth Friday, once a month. The fourth Friday of the month is our prayer service here on Facebook. You can connect up uh, on Facebook on Fridays at 7.30 p.m. Feel free to connect up with us uh, and be a part of our prayer, part of prayer, part of our service. We'd love to have you connected up to us with that as well. This will continue on as long as the Lord wills and we'll see where the Lord takes it. So we have these things available for you. We invite you to come and join us and connect up anytime. We want you to be part of our internet congregation. We have people that all over the country now and, and all over different parts of the world that connect up and we are so honored to be able to help bring you the gospel and a word from God. So now speaking of word, I'm going to take you to the word. This is coming from a sermon called Don't Worry. I know there's a lot going on. There's a lot of things that are stressing people throughout. Jobs, money, sickness, all kind of things. But this is to encourage you that as long as God is on your side, worry should not be in your uh, category. It should not be in your vocabulary. We trust, we believe, and so we don't have to worry. I pray this blesses you. Share it with somebody who needs to hear it. Don't forget, always share the services, getting more and more shares every week, and that's a blessing, it's sharing and spreading the ministry. So share it with somebody else, tag somebody else, and join us. God bless you. We look forward to seeing you real soon. The stresses that are pulling on us and pulling us apart um, are not satisfied with settling down. They are going to even intensify even further as time goes forward. This is going to be a rough time in this country, which means it's a rough time in the world. Because what happens here continues to expand itself across the world. And I'm going to say it again. The cloud that is causing this atmosphere, it's not just any individual person at this point. Because when one person goes away, there's other things that are going to come right up in their place. It's institutionalized at this point. I know I'm stressing you out. Let me, let me move on. <laughs> but there, the, the point of this is that there are all kind of things that are going on. We've got protests and riots. We've got all kind of things that just could keep popping up. Um, I'm, I'm just not even going to the detail because I'm just going to mess you up. Uh, but there are all kind of things happening around us which are stressful. Everybody say stressful. stressful. Say it like you got to relieve some of that stress. Stressful. There are so many things going on around us that are causing all kind of stress. Your routines have been shifted, and you can't do what you want to do or what you used to do. You can't even re meet, uh, meet people 
like you want to meet them, very concerned about Thanksgiving coming up and the impact of that. So you've got to be conscious and careful about who you, who you talk to, even with your own family. This is a stressful time. You have to be conscious and careful not only who's coming in your door, but whose door you're going in. And we used to focus this on being, you know, as long as I put my mask on and things and go out when I go out to Wegmans and in these groups. But the reality is the main way that these things are spreading right now are in your little social communities. Because the people we assume are okay and the people that we're around all the time and therefore we take off our masks, but you forget they're not only along with you, but they're around with other people too. And this is the thing that we're finding. I sell this just to emphasize the fact that this is a stressful time. And one of the interesting things about stress is that stress is not always obvious. Sometimes you don't even realize you're under stress. Sometimes you think you're handling everything fine. I think I got this. I'm under control. I was on uh, a video chat with my, uh, with my boss at work this week, and you know he had COVID at the beginning of the year in March and has still been experiencing different things as a result of that. And, one of the things they wanted him to do was he got himself a, a, a stress meter that he wears. And he was sitting talking to me, he says, you know, I, I'm looking at my stress meter, and it says I'm stressed. He says, I don't feel stressed. According to this, I got up this morning and was down, and everything was calm, and then I did a couple things, and boom, 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 and now it's stressed. And I'm sitting here talking to you, it says I'm stressed. He says, I don't feel stressed. And I told him, I said, you know, sometimes stress, you, you can be stressed, and not even realize it, not even, it's not always what you feel. It's not always heart palpitations. It isn't always, you know, the anxiety. Sometimes you get used to being stressed. And so your normal starts becoming stressed. Uh, in other words, you've got all kind of stresses going on, but you don't realize it anymore because you have gotten used to having that sense of, or that feeling or that aspect in your life. I remember I used to tease and tell the story, especially to my kids, when I was, uh, going through school and I finished my bachelor's degree and I had been working, hustling, I mean hustling for like five years to finish it, just intense. And then the last semester or two, I just went all in and, and I was still working and I was still taking care of my kids and I was still in church. And, and, and so it was very, very intense. And when I finished the last semester <clears throat> and, and had nothing else to do, it was about a month I had planned a vacation after this, you know, celebration. About, but it was about a month later. And so when I finished everything, I still hauled, had all this hepped up energy in me. I wasn't even thinking about it. I just, it was just there. And so, listen, we had the cleanest house. <laughs> we had an immaculate house for about three weeks. We had all, all the things that never got done got done. Everything was to, and it wasn't just me, because I got my kids in it. Get that vacuum out. Get over there. We're going to clean these windows. Why don't you wipe that off? Why are these dishes sitting up here? And it happened for like three weeks. I was just all in, just wound up, and just, just pushing, pushing, pushing. And, and we went on vacation, and I came back. And, and when I was on vacation, it was kind of like everything went, <sighs> And I came back, and I looked at my kids, and I said, I was really bad, wasn't I? <laughs> and they said, yes, Dad, you were real bad. Because I had become accustomed to a level of intensity that was my norm and didn't even realize it. Stress can get you wound up and you don't even realize what's going on. You just think you're doing your thing. You think you're okay. But yet your mind and your body are suffering while you're going through this. It will age you. It'll bring out gray hairs. Hello. <laughs> It'll bring out wrinkles. Come on, somebody. Some of us gain weight. Some of us do, do all kind of stuff. Happens. We like wonder what's happening. What's, what's going on? Where did this come from? I didn't know. Stress will impact you even when you don't realize it. You can be under stress and not even realize the depth of stress that you're under. Let me talk to you a little bit more about stress. Stress is, in, in essence, it's an overexertion. It's the result of conditions that press on you. How many people know, got some things pressing on you right now? And it becomes an overexertion to the response of everything that is pressing on you. It's both physical and emotional. 
And it is the exercise is a stress. Exercise is a stress that expands your capabilities. It's a type of stress. When you work out, when you push weights, you are stressing your body to a certain extent. Now, y'all know, those of you who work out know what happens if you overstress your body. There's a problem. But the intent of exercise, especially weights and things like that, even running, is to stress your body to the point where your body responds by building up more capability. So, okay, if you need that kind of strength, then we need to put some more muscle on here to get you ready. If you got to run that long of a distance, then we got to build up your lungs. We got to get your heart ready to be able to handle that. So you stress your body in order to get it to respond and build additional capability. But renewed strength, get this, renewed strength takes rest. If you don't get any rest, then you will overstress because your body doesn't have the opportunity to respond to the things that you are pressing on it with. Your mind will behave the same way. If you overstress yourself and you are not allowed the opportunity to rest, then your mind, your body will not be able to recover. In other words, if you go from one thing to the next, 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 you sleep, you get up, and you go from one thing to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next, and you keep going, that, going with that, if you don't get the opportunity to relax from the things that you're dealing with, from the environment that you are surrounded with, from the atmosphere that is stressing on you, sooner or later there is going to be a problem. Because stress without rest or re, uh, re, reper, re, uh, repercussion, without uh, re, recuperation, thank you, stress without rest or recuperation is damaging. Question is, are you getting any rest? In the middle of everything that you're dealing with, y'all real quiet today, amen? I don't know what that means, but are you getting any rest in the midst of everything that's going on in your life? Stress is escalated by a sense of being out of control. You've heard me talk about this. Stress, in essence, comes when you feel like you can't handle everything that's going on around you. That's the emotional aspect. The physical, if you're on weights and you feel like you can't handle that weight, it messes with your mind. Your body may be able to do it, but if your mind is not there, the stress will cause you to quit when you could have kept going. The stress will cause you to give up when the reality is you could have made it, but you because you feel like I can't handle this today. I feel like I'm not I'm not with it. I, my mind is not there. It will cause you to quit and be out of, because you feel like you are out of control. Perspective of not being able to handle it or overexerting by what you're dealing. It's the feeling of being beyond your ability. If you, once you get to that point, a lot of people handle a lot of stuff under stress, and you're okay. But stress really starts acting up when all of a sudden you feel like, okay, something slipped, something changed, and I don't know what I'm going to do now. Anybody ever been there? You've been pumping along, pushing along, and it got under control, and then somebody said something. Sometimes just somebody just said something. Amen. And when that, what they said just put you all out of whack. And all of a sudden, everything is just tumbling around you because it messed with your head. Sometimes you're just going and going, and all of a sudden, one situation, one relationship, one thing you're depending on, amen, gets, 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 gets moved or manipulated. And it pushes you to that point where you don't know, amen, how you're going to deal with anymore. And then not just that one thing is a problem, everything else now. I don't know how to deal with nothing now. I don't know how to deal with what I was doing. I don't know why I deal with what happened. I have my kids. I, I'm just dropping everything because my stress is telling me I am out. Of, I can't handle this anymore. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Y'all better you gotta help me out here today. Amen. Amen. Stressful jobs. Amen. Stressful relationships. Amen. Stressful environment and atmosphere. Amen. Stressful people in your life. Hmm. Stressful family members. Some people will stress you out. Amen. You got to not be around certain people because you were all right until they showed up. True. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I was handling it until so-and-so showed up, and now, oh, my God, all the stress of everything going on inside of me. You got to understand that things will push you over a limit and cause stress in your life that you don't think, amen, you're going to be able to handle, and then you're in big trouble. Yeah. I say all this, and I, but I want to give you a biblical perspective that, that ties to this because the Bible teaches us some things about stress. The Bible, where it talks about stress, oftentimes describes the word troubled. 
Don't be troubled, troubled. The word troubled, the definition of the word troubled is to, is to be beset, is the, is the word they use, or overrun with, beset by or overrun with uh, uh, a problems or conflicts, or to be full, overly full of problems in conflicts. I'm, I'm troubled right now because I'm overrun with all the things. When I get to that point where it's overrunning on me, that's troubled. I, I, I'm troubled now because there's so much happening. I'm just filled up. I've been overtaken by all these issues, all these conflicts, all these problems. I could handle the one little issue over here and just work around it. I could handle a problem that, that happened over there and you, 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 you amen. But, and, and this over here. But when the, all this stuff started coming, it's overrunning on me. Anybody ever been in a position when you felt like it was just overrunning? It's just too much. Amen. Just too much. Troubled. It's cause, amen, it's this, this aspect of stress that comes into our lives and makes us feel this way. But Jesus spoke about being troubled and encourages us not to be troubled. Amen. In other words, he implies that it's a, a state of mind that you're dealing with when you're troubled. It, it, it's, it's not just the physical things. It, it's, it's the state of mind. In other words, you can have the same stuff still going on and not yet be troubled by it. He says, yes, it's not that these things are going to disappear, but don't be troubled by it. John 14 and 27, one of the things that Jesus said, he said, peace I leave with you. He said, my peace I give you. I love that. He says, I am giving you peace. I'm going to give you a blessing of peace. Regardless of what you're going through, amen, regardless of what's happening in the world, regardless of what, what situations you're dealing with, I'm giving you peace peace. Not that I'm changing the situation, but I'm going to give you peace. Hallelujah. Some of us need to receive that peace in our situation today. He goes on, amen, in the verse to say, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. He says, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. It's a mindset. It implies a state of mind. Amen. Don't let your mind be troubled by all the things that are going on. And Jesus, in fact, was warning them of this because he knew there was some trouble that was coming. But he says, don't let your mind, don't let your heart be troubled by the things that are about to happen. Don't let it overrun you. Don't let it overwhelm you. Don't let it stress you to the point where you think you're out of control. You've got to remember that it's a mindset that says, I can't do it. But when you realize that you actually have everything that you need to make it through, then you need to get your mind back in order and say, look, mind, look, self, amen, no matter what's coming against me, I thank God. God for my gift of peace yeah. because I can have peace in the midst of this, not just by it ending, not just it don't have to go away. Listen, COVID don't have to go anywhere. You can still have peace yeah. in the midst of your circumstances. Yeah. Let not your heart be troubled today. Amen. Yeah. Neither let it be afraid. No matter what the devil tries to put against you, do not be afraid. No matter how big the enemy may seem to be, don't let it cause you to be afraid afraid. Amen. Somebody say, don't let it get to you. Don't let it get to you. No matter what is thrown at you, no matter what is happening around you, no matter how things shift, do not let it get to you. Doesn't apply that there, it doesn't imply that there's no problem. Doesn't imply that situations are all gone. This is not a fairy tale, amen, where everything, amen, that is really isn't. It's not, we're not depending or pretending like it's not real, like there's not real circumstances going on around you. It doesn't imply that there's no problems. It means that you just don't let it get to you. Don't let it overwhelm you. Amen. Jesus talks further, amen, in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 25, starting in 25. This is the New Living Translation. He says, that is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life. Hmm, this is Jesus speaking. Don't worry about everyday life. Some of us are wrapped up every day about everyday life. Amen? And you conquer one thing, and guess what? Another thing shows up. You know why? Because that is everyday life. It's coming every day. Amen? So if you're looking for everything to be gone, then you're looking to be in heaven. Because right now you're on the earth, and you are living in what? Everyday life. 
Amen. So he says, that's why I'm telling you not to worry. Some people spend all their time worrying. What's going to happen today? What is going to do tomorrow? Amen. What do I got to do? How am I going to handle everything? And, uh, I'm not telling you not to plan. I'm not telling you not to work your way through it. But don't worry about it. Don't let it stress you out. He says, I tell you not to, let, not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food or drink. People are like, that's the thing I need to be worried about. Hey, man, am I going to have enough to eat? Am I going to have enough? And he says, don't worry about whether you have enough food, or to drink, eat, uh, food and drink or enough clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Understand that this is not him taking it lightly. Nobody's saying, you know, oh, hey, don't worry about it. It's just going to work out. I mean, it's not that we're taking it lightly, but you need to understand, amen, that there are provisions for you even when you don't see or understand where they are because you are somebody special. Sometimes we forget. Sometimes we lose track. Sometimes we can't see it, but you are a child of God, which means that God is taking care of you. God has you in mind. He knows what you're going through. He cares about you, and he's watching over you. Amen. Verse 32 of the same chapter says, listen, he says, these things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. Hmm. Unbelievers are worried about what they're going to get and where things are going to come from and, and where, where the, how their problems are going to be resolved. Unbelievers have a reason to be afraid of how things are going to happen and turn out or what's going to happen next. Unbelievers have a rationale. Yeah, okay, yeah, I, I feel you. Amen. I know you got problems, but you are not, you are a little different from that. There's something working on your side that they don't have. You have an advantage on your side that they're not depending on. That's why you don't have to worry. He goes on to say, because your heavenly father already knows all your needs. How many of you are glad to know today that your heavenly father already knows about it? That's why you can allow it not to get to you. I know that you're in the midst of the heat. I know that there are things stressful all around you. I know you're trying to figure out what's going to happen next. But the one thing that we have is the advantage of faith. Come on, somebody. We can trust in God. No matter what the circumstance looks like, no matter how hard the days, no matter how dark they may become, I'm glad to know that my heavenly Father already knows about it. So my strength is not because I'm strong. Some of us are trying to strengthen our own way through it and that's the problem the unbelievers have because there's only so much strength you can you can rally up with all the stuff that's going on around you now but I'm not dependent on my strength somebody said my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus blood and righteousness on Christ the solid rock I stand how many of you know there's something on your side that's greater than all the stuff you're trying to fight against today hallelujah somebody say don't let it get to you say don't worry about it because your father knows hallelujah everything that you're dealing with oh but you don't know what I've got going on I got this I got that amen I got another thing and here comes something else and oh lord who knows what's going to happen next but your father knows all about it he knows everything you're dealing with every struggle that's going on every penny you're trying to pinch every problem you're trying to resolve every person that's talking about you listen you don't have to worry about defending yourself against that liar of that cheetah because your father knows all about it and he is taking care of you. Say, don't let it get to you. Don't let it get to you. Don't let it get to you because he knows about it. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus said in the book of Mark chapter 11, simply put, have faith in God. Come on, somebody. Have faith in God. No matter what you're seeing, I'm going to have faith in God. I'm going to trust my God through it all. I might not be able to make it myself but I'm not going to be stressed about this any longer I refuse to be stressed because my God knows what I'm going through today come on somebody God knows what I'm dealing with God knows every problem, everything that's rising up against me, every enemy that's coming in from the left and from the right, everything that I'm lacking, every place that I'm hurting. God knows all about it, and he is taking care of me. Somebody say, don't be troubled about the things you're dealing with right now. 
Hallelujah. We got to learn how to trust in God. And I just came to tell you today this word. Amen. Don't worry. Somebody say, don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're dealing with, it's time to stop worrying about it. Amen. Those sleepless nights, you need to let that go. Amen. And the way you let it go is by trusting in somebody greater than yourself. When you realize your father knows, amen, don't worry anymore about how it's going to work out. Oh, but I got to see. I got to know. I got to know you don't have to know anything. That's the beauty about serving God. You don't have to know anything. All you've got to know is that God is on my side. Hallelujah. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about what's coming against you. Don't worry about what's trying to attack you. Don't worry about the lies that are rising up. Don't worry about those that are cheating and those that are corrupt and unfair. Everybody's not playing the game the same way. But don't worry about it because the Lord is on your side. Hallelujah. Don't worry about it. Keep going. Keep going. Somebody say keep going. Keep going. Keep pressing. Keep moving on. Amen. Stop worrying and keep going. Amen. Amen. Keep working on it, but don't worry about it. Hallelujah. Keep moving on it, but don't worry about it. Hallelujah. No more sleepless nights. Somebody ought to say no more sleepless nights for me. No more stress pains. Hallelujah. Amen. These palpitations happening in my heart. I rebuke it right now. I'm not going to be stressed by it. Amen. The enemy is trying to tell you you're sick. He's trying to tell you you're dying. But don't worry. Because the Lord is on your side today. Hallelujah.